Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section of the class, we're going to switch gears a little bit from all of the vectors that we've been doing so far. And we're going to tackle the topic of double integrals, or double integration, OK? So when you flip to the back of a calculus textbook, usually you'll see these things called double and triple integrals, which we're going to get to here in the next several sections. And they can look off-putting at first. I mean, they can you know, give you the creeps a little bit at first because, you know, instead of just one integral sign, you might see two of them or you might see three of them. And you get into integration of different coordinate systems that we'll get into here in a little bit. But right now we're going to focus on double integrals. Let me ask you the following. Remember back in Calculus 1, when you first learned the concept of an integral, it's usually presented to you as the area under a curve, right? You have some function of x, uh, f of x, and when you take the integral of that function between two points, uh, along the x-axis and you're integrating that function, what you're really doing is you're finding the area under that curve. Now we all know that integrals are used for for things a lot more interesting than just finding the area of something. You flip over and open a uh, physics text or, or any advanced you know, text out there in, in physics or engineering or whatever, you'll find integrals everywhere. And it just turns out that integration is a really nice handy way of summing up an infinite number of, of infinitesimally small things. That's what integration is. So when you're uh, doing lots of problems in real life with stress or strain in buildings or, uh, or electricity and magnetism. I mean, the list goes on and on. Integration um, is, is, just, is just as core as anything uh, goes, okay? So we've talked up till this point in the course about the functions of two variables and the functions of three variables. And we talked about how to take these partial derivatives, which is a way, a real slick way, to take the derivative of the function in more than one direction or in different directions, okay? To see how the fun function changes as you look in different directions. That's what we were doing, okay? Now, how do you think we would actually integrate a function uh, of two variables? Remember, a function of two variables sits on top of the xy plane. x and y are the independent variables. We plug them in and we get a third value. So when you draw these functions, usually they look like a mountain or something that's hovering right over the xy plane, okay? How do you think we would integrate that? What would we do that would be analogous to the regular integral that we do way back in calculus one that was defined to be the area under the curve, okay? Well, turns out that when you're dealing with more than one variable functions, you're going to do double integrals, and later on we're going to do triple integrals. The good news is, and I do mean this one with all sincerity, okay, when you get comfortable with the material in this section, it's not going to be so hard to bite off the next section and the next section and the next section. You just have to wrap your brain around this section, and once you've done that and get really comfortable with it, then going on to the section afterwards where you're, you're doing things slightly differently or triple integration and, and there's several other things that we're going to do after this that are going to build upon this, it's going to make your life easy. So now that I've laid the groundwork for what we're doing and why we're doing it and the fact that we're going to try to do some sort of integration stuff with the multivariable functions, okay, then we're going to go ahead and, and actually solidify it and, and, and learn something from it. So recall, okay, recall from the last DVD, okay, this is sort of uh, something I just wanted to bring up just, be just because, just to kind of tie it all home. Recall from the last DVD, I uh, remember uh, actually the, f the first calculus DVD, um, uh, this is the XY graph, there's nothing fancy, no, no three-dimensional functions going on here, okay? Uh, if I had a function that was defined to look, let's say, like this, okay? And if I were to take this function and rotate it around the x-axis, then I might get something that, that might look like this, right? I might get some sort of vase looking thing. All right. And before we were interested in finding the volume of this thing. Okay, we were interested in finding the volume. And we actually wrote a, a, fun, a formula for the volume, which was the integral from A to B, where this point was point A along the x axis and this point was point B along the x axis. And it was the integral of pi times f of x squared dx, where this function here was f of x. And we took f of x and we rotated it around the x-axis. So what you were doing here is, is it's pi, because you know, this is a function here, and you're rotating it around, so you have a, a, you have a circular cross-section everywhere you slice here. So if the, uh, the radius of this function is actually going to be uh, equal to f of x, because from, from, uh, if you're looking at this vase, the radius from this point to here is going to be f of x all along here. Okay, so pi times the radius squared, pi r squared, is going to give you the area of a cross-section circle, right? 
So you chop it up at any slice, pi times f of x squared is a area of the cross section and then doing the integration from a to b is what actually adds up the cross sections to give you the volume. Okay, that's what we were doing. Why do I bring that up? Because I just sort of want to give you the big picture about where we're coming from here. This only works for symmetrical for symmetrical objects. If you had a vase here that was nice and symmetrical, you could look and define a function and you could use this and calculate it pretty easily. But we all know real life doesn't have uh, always have a great deal of, of just whiz-bang symmetry that's going to make our life easy. I mean, if it did, then, then, then things would be great, but it always isn't like that, okay? So, what if you had a function that was a little more complicated, or I should say an object that was a little more complicated, and what if I wanted to find the volume of, of that more complicated object? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put our x, y, and z coordinate system in place like I always try to do. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, what if I've defined a function of two variables?